Roman, my friend, American luxury is here to stay in a big way because the brand new 2022 Lincoln Navigator is here, the brand new 2022 Grand Wagoneer is here, and of course there is the Escalade. Andre, no, you are wrong, my friend. American luxury has always been and always is what I consider the big gulp at 7-Eleven. In other words, big and thirsty. Dude, no, you are wrong. <laughs> well, in this video, Andre, we're going to have a little bit of a discussion about the new Lincoln Navigator and, of course, the brand new Grand Wagoneer the Jeep just put out. And we can't forget, of course, the Escalade in the Suburban. So why don't we start with the Navigator? Tell me about what uh, Lincoln has recently wrought. Yes, so 2022 model is a re is mid-cycle refresh, right? The brand new Navigator came out about four years ago, but now it's been changed, massaged, and it's bringing still uh, turbocharged power, basically a Ford Raptor engine. How cool is that? That's American. And of course, uh, all full luxury. They've redone their entire... Awful luxury or all full of luxury? Full of luxury. It's not <laughs> awful. Uh, you made it, my point there for a second, Andre. No, 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 no. No, listen to this. Finest leathers with special perforations that match Manhattan, New York City. Uh, then massaging seats front and back. Special... Wait, whoa, whoa, hold on. Hold, hold, let's take a step back. Perforated seats that match Manhattan. Yes. So if you imagine like the city grid, okay. you know, the streets of Manhattan yes. looking from above. Yeah. Now the perforations in the seat actually remind you of like the city uh, cityscape. So they basically uh, over... Uh, imposed Google Maps onto the seat of the Navigator. And also the wood. <laughs> so the wood is etched in different ways and different cityscapes. And it's black label. It's, it's invitation. It's wonderful. Once again, a direct, a direct reference to drinking. What? <laughs> black label. <laughs> and Manhattan. <laughs> Manhattan, yeah. All right. So like I was saying, Andre, it's big and thirsty. Well, so it's got a three and a half liter V6. It's okay. a twin turbo. Actually, it now has about 10 horsepower less than yep. before. And uh, still monstrous torque, 510 pound feet of torque, 10 speed automatic. It will tow your Chris Craft boat, which could be a classic wooden, uh, beautiful ski boat. Let, let, let me guess push button transmission. Uh, yeah. Because nothing says luxury more than trying to distinguish between the drive, reverse, and neutral button while no, it's you're like, backing it's like, out of your tight space in your Manhattan apartment. No, it's like <laughs> piano. You know, it's a beautiful concert hall and you're just playing the okay. transmission like the keys. Yeah, okay. All right. So the, it harkens back to the uh, Ford of yore. Right, where the old cars had push-button transmissions and people hated them, but then for some reason the manufacturer decided to bring them back and make them hoity-toity. Well, this is why American luxury, it's big, I agree. Yeah. Big, very spacious, very comfortable, very Unintuitive. luxurious. Huh? Unintuitive. Well, who says this? <laughs> That's what I say, push-button transmissions, unintuitive. Okay. Keep going. All right. So well, let's give you a chance. I've been jumping in. Keep going about the new Navigator. Sure. So now the interior technology has been upped. Okay. They upped the game on that. Now in the center, you have a 13.2 inch display and latest Sync 4 system. Um, it has over the air updates, all of that stuff. It also has something they call, uh, they call Active Glide, which is basically a hands free highway driving mode where the navigator will just drive by itself, of course, with you still paying attention. And this is very similar to what Jeep is doing with the Grand Wagoneer. Once again, a very large truck-based SUV with leather, wood, technology, and like bazillion screens. How much does the Navigator tow? It'll tow up to 8,700 pounds. Whoa, that's a lot. So it's still pretty Full good. Full-size truck yeah. territory. Yeah. Uh, how about the Grand Wagoneer? 10,000. Oh, uh, yes. winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yes. So Wagoneer actually tows more. Uh, the, the Escalade is around this, you know, 82, 8,300 pound um, area. But still, like I said, you can bring a big boat or a big, uh, maybe a horse trailer with you, you know, to your next horse event. Or an excavator if you're, you know, a blue collar guy who happens to have $100,000. Because let's talk about the 
price of these new American luxury vehicles. How much is the Navigator, Andre? So the pricing is not announced yet on the yes. new one. How much is the old one? Uh, it's approaching 100K with yes. options. Sure. Yes, it is. Sure. Isn't it? The new Grand Wagoneer is about 106,000. Yeah, and how much is an Escalade? It's there too. It's, it's like uh, yeah, the one we tested, I believe, was 112. Yes. Uh, so you know, uh, if if the Monroni bottom line is big then the vehicle better be twice as big. And I'll give you that, they are big and they are bold. So I will say they are bold. I mean, they are certainly in your face. But Andre, I I'm just scratching my head, you know, and I love American luxury. Obviously, there's my dad's hood from his Lincoln Continental Mark V, right? Which to yes. me represented the kind of American luxury when I was growing up. So I have a very soft spot. But why, in gosh darn name, didn't want to use God's name in vain, sorry. <laughs> why Why don't uh, they like electrify these vehicles? It seems like they would be perfect candidates with all this mass to stick a battery underneath, right? And instead of getting single digit or maybe barely double digit fuel economy, now you've got something that is either fully electric or plug-in electric or even hybrid electric. And that to me, I think represents luxury or modern luxury, right? And get away from like, Manhattan, that just to me says like fat man smoking big cigars while <laughs> drinking expensive single malt whiskeys, right? That does not scream luxury to me. That that screams male dominance and empowerment in a world where uh, that is being very much frowned upon now. You know, I, I, I hear mans mansplaining when I see that, right? That's kind of what I see. Okay. But why not go like the Tesla route where it becomes about performance, where it becomes about sustainability, where it becomes about use of interesting new materials, right? These, all this that I see right here, I, look, it's, it's the expression of American luxury over the decades, but maybe it's time that we move beyond your grandfather's Buick, Cadillac, Lincoln Continental, and now your father's Tahoe, Suburban, Right and move into something that is modern and new and electric, uh, and resonates with today and not with yesterday. Well, I think it's because this type of vehicle we're yes. talking about full size uh, three row SUV, up to eight people. You know, seven or eight people can be in this, and these things are meant to cross continents. Right, you get into it in Manhattan and you go to Chicago or you go to Denver, maybe on your road trip or a family vacation and you're relaxed because you're being massaged, you know, in all your seats and you have 28 speakers and surround sound and, you know, now, dri you know, hands-free so driving. And the battery would make it heavier, you know, and, and then you would have to stop more often and charge. So I think for this particular vehicle, this is the right way to go. You know, the Grand Wagoneer has a V8 giant Hemi. Yeah, out of the Durango. Yes, the, the 6.4 liter. All right, let me ask you this question, Andre. Now, of course, GMC is bringing back the Hummer nameplate, and yes. they're building both a uh, truck and uh, SUV. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the new Hummer GMCs feel more modern than this? I think so. I think GMC, what they're doing is, I think they're pushing the envelope. Mm in a way and bringing up first of all you know kind of an older nameplate and reinventing it uh but we still don't know a, a lot about this hummer because we haven't test driven it we don't know you know exactly you know there's data out there that says the hummer truck can weigh up to nine thousand pounds by itself that's mind-boggling yeah where can i even drive that machine and, and how far will it go in the real world I kind of feel like if you juxtaposition, and it doesn't have to be the new Lincoln, right? We're just using that because that was just unveiled recently, and that's the most, that's the newest of the latest American luxury SUVs. So it could be the Grand Wagoneer, it could also be the Escalade, right? Sure. But to me, like, it would be like, uh, you know, GM or Ford or Jeep, right? Uh, you know, introducing a new phone, but then having physical buttons and dial tone. It just doesn't feel modern or like, you know, cool. And to me, when I look at like the GMC Hummer and you've got four wheel steering, you've got air suspension, you've got, you know, all this new technology, zero to 60 in three seconds, right? Am I right about that or yeah, close yeah, to it? Yeah. yeah. That to me feels more luxurious uh, than kind of the big old 
American sedan taken to, you know, bigger and thirstier levels uh, just because you need to cross a continent. And let's face it, Andre, a lot of people who use these vehicles eventually will road trip them, but they're mostly used to, to ferry the kids around uh, to their swim lessons in very expensive communities. Or maybe going to your next business meeting in a, in a big city. Or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I can see like ten years from now, all the Hollywood movies, you know, and and like Godzilla smashing these things <laughs> as, as 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 the whole parade of like government agencies comes flying down the street. But but like I say, to me, they represent um, old American luxury. But I think it's time to reinvent that. And when the Navigator, to be fair, first came out, I kind of felt like they had done that, right? They they had reinvented American luxury. Well, they went away from the V8. Yeah, right. that away. was a big step. They went away from the V8. Yeah. Uh, but, but now I kind of feel like they, they kind of, you know, went the wrong direction. Like instead of actually go in the next iteration of it, right, the refresh, making it a hybrid or adding, you know, like a vegan option, for lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, what do you want to call yeah. that? The white label, <laughs> right? You know what I mean, right? Uh, but they went, they doubled down on what on what that was, which you know, which for its time, that was way cool, right? I can, you know, Tony Soprano, in his day, probably would have loved vehicles of that ilk. But today, it just feels like you know, with with California burning and with you know Denver having the worst air quality because of those fires on the West Coast. In all of the world, it just feels like you know, like like they, they seem to be a little bit tone deaf to what's happening. Well, um, I would say I have to wait until I get into this one, but I've studied that you know closely with video and images that we just showed you. And dude, uh, to me, you know, having a thirty-way adjustable seat with massage, and then having you know surrounded in luxury and wood and fine touch materials and surround sound that feels like the just the ultimate uh, vehicle what's powering it is another question in my mind so i think uh i think you're wrong i think it's about how it makes you feel when you get into it and actually you know your experience in the vehicle yeah you should hear that mercedes just announced and i think this is mainly i think people blew this out of proportion but it's mainly due to the chip shortage that they won't be building any new v8s for 2022 I know that's shocking. Yeah. I'm shocked. Yeah. And a lot of people have said it's mainly because of the chip shortage. So don't read into the fact that like Mercedes doesn't want to sell an S class with a V8 uh, or, you know, a G Wagon, right? Because basically that means there'll be no more G Wagon. So if you have a G Wagon, now is a great time to sell one. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself a twin turbo V6. But anyway, uh, it, it is interesting that, you know, because of the chip shortage, they chose to, to do away with the V8 uh, and move into a more, um, eco-friendly engine. And I, look, don't get me wrong, I love the V8, right? I, I love... Dude, I their love four-liter the, twin-turbo V8s are amazing. Amazing, just amazing. amazing. Yeah, especially the Grand Wagoneer. I drove that in the uh, Durango. Sounds amazing. Uh, you know, it's what, it's what to me, represents the, kind of the, um, the go... The, what makes these vehicles fun, right? It's what, it, it's what gives them the, 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 the burliness, the, you know, the toughness. Mm -hmm. But I also realize that, you know, we're living in different times than when my dad was alive. And then when your grandfather was alive, and maybe, you know, we acknowledge that. So we move away from, you know, these big, traditionally luxurious vehicles in that kind of, you know, leather and massaging seats and, you know, a humidor and then the champagne flutes in the back, right? <laughs> all, all that stuff just feels really like, 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 so uh, 1990 or 2000 to me at this point, especially after the last couple of years that we've had. So... You know, we'll see. I mean, time will tell. I guess, you know, I am not the ultimate arbitrator of this, of course, and neither are you, not OSR. We'll see how sales are, right? That That's going to that's yeah. gonna be, um, you know, if, if, if they are, if, you know, I'm out of touch with society and they are in touch with society, which is certainly, you know, uh, something that, that, that is very possible, if not <laughs> ultimately possible, uh, then we'll, we'll see based on sales. But um, I, let me ask you this. Yes. Okay, one question. You've got one hundred and twelve thousand dollars, right? Are you going to buy? Oh, okay. You're going to buy the Hummer. You're going to have to. You have to buy one of these. So I'm not going to begin out. I'm not going to be like, well, I'm going to go buy three Honda Civics. That, <laughs> you don't get that. You got one hundred and twelve. You got to buy one of these four cars, right? Yeah. Escalade. Okay. Number okay. one. Okay. Um, Grand Wagoneer. Uh, Navigator. Or Hummer. SUT Sport Utility. Hmm. 
That, that's a tough one. That's which, a tough which, one. 112. Which uh, one? And you have to buy one. Which one do you go? Which Which one do you go buy today? I think today I would buy a Grand Wagoneer. Okay, fair. I, I drove it in New York, and yeah. I really fell in love with that V8 engine. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the one I would buy. And let us know what you think too. Yeah, I was gonna. Uh, I was yeah. gonna say I'd buy you know the all electric. GMC, but they, you know, GM once again. But it's not here. <laughs> We'd love to get our hands on it. I'm feeling a little bit jealous, if I'm being honest, because they gave it to you know Marcus Brownlee, uh, and they they gave him both the truck and the SUV, uh, and he got to take it to the studio and crawl over it. You know, I'd love to be like, hey, you know, this is a new form of luxury, but but we don't have it. I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm jealous. I'm gonna be. I'm jealous, dude. It is there, what it is. There you yeah. go. So um, interesting. So you're gonna go for the Grand Wagoneer, huh? I, I would. I really fell in love with that kind of V8 sense and the the, the interior that it has. So it, do, it does have a really slick interior, especially, I think, seven screens at most, right? Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm say up to seven, depending it's, on... It's a crazy amount of screens. There's three in the back and there's, like, four in the front, like you said. So, yeah. huge. Huge, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we shall see. Uh, and we sh- it won't take long because, um, you know, a lot of the manufacturers now are in chip shortage mode, and so they're putting chips in their most expensive vehicles because that's the ones that they make the most profit in. And also, um, I th- I'm guessing why Lincoln doubled down on Black Label and expanded it is because they're saying that's what customers are buying, Lincoln people are buying. So we'll have to wait and see. You know, Let us know what you guys think. You know, Would you like to buy one of these uh, you know, Black Label new navigators or... Something else. Yeah, and let us know in the comments, you know, am I completely off base? And that is definitely someplace I've been a lot recently. <laughs> <laughs> or is Andre right about, uh, you know, doubling down on traditional American luxury uh, and redefining it uh, in such a way where it's, what would you call it? Uh, bold, big, and thirsty? Uh, luxury liner, I would, I would say. What, what is a fuel economy? Well, we don't know on this new one, but it, it was around, what, 16 to 17 combined. How about, how about the Grand uh, Wagoneer? You don't want to know. I want to know. No. Uh, it's about I, I want, I, they want to know. What is it? It's about 14 Whoa. combined. Wow. Wow. Hey. You got to sell a you lot. Gotta, you got to pay. Dude, you got to sell a lot of Renegades. You, you, <laughs> you got to pay. You got to pay to be. To uh, make up your cafe numbers. <laughs> you got to pay to be a big dog sometimes. Yeah, it's like four <laughs> Renegades for the price of one of those. It's okay. But they don't even have the Jeep label on it, do they? They do not. And yeah. they don't want to call it a Jeep. But, by the way. but it's still being sold at the Jeep dealership. It's sold at the de- Jeep dealership, and you have to go to jeep.com to... Uh, it's a little confusing. Okay. Yeah. It's a little confusing. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you for uh, hopefully enjoying this episode of Know You're Wrong. And let us know in the comments below what is your favorite of those four and why. See you guys next time. And Andre, maybe you're not wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. We'll see. Ciao.